About four weeks ago, I ended up having a major medical emergency that resulted in life-saving emergency surgery. And this actually isn't the first time that I had to go through this, although this time was a little bit different. I'll explain what happened, where I'm at now with the recovery process and what our homestead looks like moving forward, especially in like the short to medium term as I'm going through this recovery process. But I know if some of you didn't see any of the community posts that I put up, you probably wondered what happened to the channel. Did it completely just fall off the face of the earth? And no, that's what happened. And that's where I've been in this recovery phase. So yeah, let's get into it. In the days leading up to my medical emergency, I was in a race to get the garden planted because we were already getting everything in late because we had had such a rainy, wet spring season. And this was my second day of planting. And throughout the day, I just kept feeling progressively worse. And there's a little bit of a backstory to this that I'll explain in a minute. So that day, I just ended up basically spending the rest of the day on the couch, not feeling well with abdominal pain. This wasn't unusual for me, necessarily. So the next day I started to feel a little bit better, but by the third day, I was in intense, intense, nonstop pain. And the nature of the pain had even kind of changed from how it started. And so Glenn took me to the emergency room where initially they thought maybe I just had appendicitis, but they did a CT scan with dye that showed that I potentially had something much more serious going on and so they rushed me into emergency surgery where they did an exploratory laparotomy cutting me from the bottom of my rib cage to the top of my pelvic bone and they found that I had a closed loop bowel obstruction of my large bowel. That resulted in that part of my colon becoming necrotic. It died. I was at extreme risk for that to burst and perforate, which is really scary because you can get sepsis from that, obviously. They successfully removed 20% of my large intestine and luckily they were able to stitch everything back together because there was the risk that I might end up having to actually have a colostomy. Luckily that wasn't the case and everything worked out. but. Yeah, so 20% of my colon was removed, closed me back up, and then I spent the next eight and a half days in the hospital with a very frustrating and beginning a very long recovery. Finally, I was able to eat some solid food, and then once they saw that everything was working properly again, I was finally able to be discharged, and man, was I ready after almost was like eight and a half days in the hospital. I was so ready to go home. <laughs> I want more. <laughs> so the backstory to all this and how this all happened to me goes back 12 years ago. I had ended up in the emergency room with a perforated bowel 12 years ago. They had cut me from the bottom of my rib cage to the top of my pelvic bone, opened me up, looked in there. From what I understand, they couldn't actually find exactly where the perforation had occurred, but they cleaned everything out, put me all back together, and there was, none of my internal anatomy was removed or changed or anything like that. But I had this very long recover from this exploratory laparotomy. So I had, in a sense, done this before. However, the thing that happened to me this time was because of that exploratory laparotomy and uh, the perforation, all that, I developed a whole lot of adhesions in my abdomen. And over time, these adhesion, adhesions started tugging on things, pulling on things, moving intestines in places they shouldn't have been moved, and finally they moved an intestine into a place where it got strangulated and cut off the blood supply to it and killed it. So <laughs> yeah, all of this was that happened to me this time was a result of the surgery that I had 12 years ago and the adhesions that developed from it, which is pretty terrifying really because I have talked to my doctors and stuff and they do say that yes, 
Every time you go into the abdomen, there's a very high risk of forming adhesions, and some people are more susceptible to developing them than other people, and I am at very high risk moving forward for developing more and for those causing complications. But it's one of those things where maybe I never have complications again from it, but there again, the likelihood or the odds aren't exactly in my favor, I guess you could say. So that's a little bit scary. As of yesterday, it was four weeks since the operation. Recovery is slow, very slow, but ongoing. I cannot, hi, puppy. Come on, do you want to come say hi? You want to come say hi here? <laughs> there she is. <laughs> okay, be good. Be good. <laughs> I can't lift anything over about five to ten pounds for another probably two weeks. Oh my goodness, you're gonna be all slobbery. <laughs> um, I still have very low energy. I still can't do a lot of housework and things like that. There's still a lot that I can't do, especially when it comes to homestead type stuff. As you know, homesteading involves a lot of, you know, lifting over 10 pounds for sure. So there's a long way to go. And luckily Glenn's been able to have a lot of time off work to help me take care of things. As far as the garden goes, Glenn was able to get in all the rest of the seedlings and some of the corn, although the corn probably got in a little too late. So the thing is with the garden, as disappointing as this whole thing has been, it's going to be what it's going to be. And we have to be grateful for what we get, count our blessings. I'm still here. <laughs> That's always a big bonus. So, you know, Whatever happens, happens with the garden. We'll get something, who knows what, because things are just not optimal and ideal. Glenn is actually out today doing some brush hogging. He did cut a small baling of hay recently. So things are moving along just slowly and I haven't been able to participate in 99% of what's going on right now. So, moving forward with the channel, what is that going to look like while I'm going through this recovery process? Because I still have a really long way to go. Um, probably going to be doing a lot of things in the kitchen because that's something that I'll be able to do really, really soon. Maybe recipes, things like that. If you guys have any ideas for me, let me know. Um, I probably will be able to, in a few weeks, start doing a few things in the garden. I haven't really been able to get out to take care of chickens yet. Some of that will be coming soon because I miss Oa and yeah. One of the best things that I got out of this entire experience was seeing just how horrible the food system is in this country and I'm sure other countries as well. But we've been so far removed from how awful it really is that I was just kind of astounded that a place like a hospital where people are supposed to be healing and you know getting better recovering that they're serving foods like a container of butter that actually doesn't contain one ingredient that even real butter is even made with like things you can't even pronounce it, I just I don't know but it's a good reminder as to why we do what we do the food system is atrocious that we're feeding this stuff to our children in schools, our loved ones in hospitals, and probably even prisoners. I mean, there were some people that would say, who cares what we feed prisoners? But I don't know, to each his own. It's just, the food system is an entire abomination. And it's all the more reason to grow your own food, support local farmers that are doing things the right way. It's so sad to me how few people link food to health. Food is everything. Health is everything. So that is the update for now and we're just gonna keep moving forward. But I want to thank all you guys for all the wonderful comments on the community posts. It really helped me out while I was in the hospital to have all those lovely things to read. Thank you so much. Kazu, you can help me get up. Come on. You can help me get up. Come on. Come on. Let's get up. You help me get up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay.